you have a basement full of Gucci gear and that basement is your mom's basement, hit the subscribe button. If you moved out of your mom's basement and you came back to your ba mom's basement and now you have a bunch of Gucci gear in there, so hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, like, comment, all that good stuff. So I've been getting a lot of good questions from some law enforcement officers from military asking me about duty rifle setups to make sure that your rifle is set up for real world situations. And that also applies to the guys that's looking at home defense or defending their property and that type of stuff. So I thought I'd do a short video on some practical rifle setup and how I've set up some of my rifles and how you don't have to spend too much money to make a rifle that will work in a variety of situations. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with what's important on a duty rifle. So in no particular order, we have sling light optic. So those three things are, gonna, are going to be the basis from which we expand depending on the type of mission set we're doing or operations we're doing and that type of thing. Uh, whether you be in the basement or whether you be doing house entry, that type of thing. So if you're going to be working uh, with a short barreled rifle or something like that, you run into a lot of constraints. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and let's talk about slings. So first off, here is my Mark 18. This is what I primarily shoot. And for slings, I did a video on it, but I typically recommend a two-point sling. And the reason for that is if you use a single-point sling and you drop that thing, you're going to hit yourself in the dick, which is not very fun at all. Good gun. Um, when it comes to a two-point sling, I like to set it up so it almost has a lot of the advantages of a single-point sling. And I do that by mounting one end to the end of the receiver and the other end pretty close to where the rail begins. What that does is allows me to still switch shoulders easily and also... Um, allows me to sling the weapon as necessary or when I drop it when I'm transitioning or going hands-on that type of thing I'm still able to not hit myself in the dick or for it to get in the way and that type of thing So I think it's really important to have a good sling setup now a lot of people like to do the Convertible ones where they can go from single point to two point and I think those are useful However, I like to just leave mine in two point because honestly a lot of times you can't predict when you're gonna be going hands-on So you're not like hey, I'm going down the hallway. Oh, I see a guy hey, dude, hold up for a second, and you switch from single point to two point, sling your rifle, you're like, all right, what's up, let's go. So that's not always going to be the case. <laughs> I'm not saying that's how it's going to go down. I've just found in my experience that just leaving it in two point seems to work most of the time. Another thing to consider is going to be lights. So you can spend a lot, a lot of money on lights, and in a lot of cases, you're spending money on kind of the the history that that particular company has. So for example, Surefire has a really good record of its lights surviving a lot of really bad situations. And it's for that reason that a lot on a lot of really serious duty setups, I do recommend Surefire right off the bat because I'm very confident in its ability to run under a variety of conditions and not fail you when, um, when, you, least, <laughs> when you don't need it to. So in my case on the Mark 18, I have a Surefire Scout Mini. And the reason I use the Mini is because anytime I'm using a light is mostly indoors, um, you know, lighting up basements, rescuing love pillows, um, going room to room, that type of stuff. So because of that, I don't need a whole lot of lumen output. So that's the reason I went with the Scout Mini. Now, another thing you notice is that on this particular setup, I have a shorty. So, and I also have a PEC 15 mounted here on top. So that really limits the amount of room where I can put a pressure switch. Because typically I'd want it to be right on the very top. However, I'm not gonna mount my pressure switch on the top because that would, to some extent or another, occlude my ability to depress my PEC because I like to be able to activate my IR illuminator just on the very top on that button. I don't like to use little switches. You can also mount the pressure switch further back right here. Now, I've seen some people do that, but on the short barreled rifles, that doesn't work, work really well when you're trying to you know, get a good grip on the rifle. So I'm not a big fan of that. So what I typically have done is I'll either tuck it up under right here and that does work or I'll put it on a vertical grip. I'll put it on a vertical grip of some uh, type or another. That way when I'm going, I just have to shift my grip and turn it on. I can still keep my, you know, Gucci thumb over bore, all that kind of crap. That's just what works for me. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. I'm just saying, hey, my experience, it's good to go. <clears throat> so, as you can see here, talking about this particular setup, we are somewhat limited because this is set up for night vision use, primarily. So, if I'm going to be outside, I don't want all that lumen output because I'm not using my 
flashlight, I'm using either the IR illuminator, using my MBGs, that type of thing. Hence, this PEC-15 takes up a whole lot of room. So if you don't have a PEC-15 or some type of IR illuminator, whether it be D-Ball, PEC-15, whatever, then you have a lot more rail space. So we have something like my Mark 18 Mod Zero setup. So pretty much the same setup, except I have a front sight gas post just permanently attached there. Now, a couple things about this setup is that I have a whole lot less crap going on. This also cost me a whole lot less money to set up, I think. Uh, the upper itself was around 400. The ProTac light was about a third to a half of the cost of the Surefire, so it was around $100. Um, same grip, about 30. So anyhow, it cost me a whole lot less. So a couple things to note about this particular setup. One, I have the pressure pad on top. And what's nice about the stream lights, um, when it's coming to lights, by the way, is that they have a lot of the performance of the Surefire. Maybe, maybe they're not as reliable. I don't know. I haven't seen that in my experience. I've used this light quite a bit, and I've never had any problems. Um, but what's cool is they come out. They come with a lot more accessories than the Surefire does. So they come with a pressure pad, the nice one where it has the, the permanent on and the momentary on and all that kind of stuff. It also has these little rail sections so you can keep your pressure pad in the correct place, and I found that it works pretty, pretty well. The bounce is also solid when it comes to the stream light, so I'm pretty impressed with the stream light overall. Um, when it comes to setup on these, a lot of people see these types of rifles and they're like, wow, what a waste. You have a front sight you know, post right up here that's always up permanently. You can't fold it down. It's kind of obstructing your sight picture. But I want to counter and say that I prefer to have a front sight post that is permanently up because when I'm looking through my optic, it serves as a reference point when I'm shooting really close quarters and it seems to work pretty well for me. So be not dismayed if that's all your department issues you or if that's all you're issued. Just something to think about. Now, a couple notes here. If I had a not short barreled rifle, a longer rifle, then I can kind of mess with the light placement or the peck placement a little bit. So for example, with the Mark 18 type, I can go ahead and if I had a lot more rail, I could put that peck all the way up front and I could have all those pressure pads right behind it and I still would have enough room to fully grip out and get a good length of pull on this rifle. With our M4 type variants, we're still a little bit more limited because typically the only thing that's longer is going to be our barrel. So the thing that's going to be longer is going to be the barrel. So you're still going to be at a premium when it comes to your rail space and that type of thing. Another option that you have when it comes to your lights and your pec setup is some people like to put their pec on the right side and then for their light, instead of doing a pressure pad, they simply do a light that is directly mounted with a push button. That way it's mounted right up front, and should you need to activate it, you just hit it with the back of your thumb. Now, that does work. Um, I have no problems with that. It's just not what I prefer. What's nice about that is easy to push. Now, it's not, of course not going to be ambidextrous. I can't reach over with my right hand and activate it. So that could possibly be a problem. Now, in this case, this is a really cheap setup and one of the first setups I ever did. It's a Surefire G2 X, I want to say, or G2 flashlight, just with a simple ring mount. Um, it's a lot heavier than a lot of the other weapon lights, and I don't think it's specifically rated to be a weapon light, but it's worked very well. So I know a lot of people that have done that, and it's worked fine. So different light options that you have when it comes to that. So we talked about slings. We talked about lights. Let's finally talk about optics. So... I know everybody's really constrained when it comes to optics and iron sights and all that type of stuff, so let's hit iron sights first. If you want to use iron sights, you can definitely do that. Just realize that, no kidding, you're at a disadvantage. Look, it's, the future is now, right? We have holographic projected reticles. We have red dots that project that reticle you know, at infinity, and they're powered for five years or for 10 years or something crazy like that. The point is, is that there's a lot to be gained from a red dot. Now, if you just don't have it in your budget to purchase one, um, hear me out first. So if you want to do, not, do iron sights, make sure you get good ones. So good iron sights, Magpul Pros, the metal ones, Daniel Defense fixed sights. I have a Daniel Defense fixed sight in the front of my Mark 18 right here. Something like that. But realize these fixed sights uh, a lot of times are costing almost as much as a good budget red dot. So what is a good budget red dot? Red dot, something like Hollow Sun 
or Vortex or something like that. I've seen some good things from Primary Arms as well. I think I have a review from all the way back in my old YouTube days. So there's a lot of really good budget optics and they're costing between, you know, 100 to 200, somewhere right around there. And you get a lot for that money. Now, you don't have that same battlefield reliability that say an aim point has, but you have a really good warranty. And I know a lot of people who are gonna be putting these on their duty rifles are like, hey, I want the best. And, and I think you should try to get the best, but just realize that due to budget constraints or what you're able to spend might not always work for you. And I will say this, I've seen the Vortex and the primary arms optics take a lot of beating and be able to still continue to function. I don't think they're quite on the level as a Chichicon MRO or the aim point or something like that, but there's a lot of options there. Now, a good kind of midpoint between those the Vortex and like an aim point T1 is something like the aim point uh, Pro. I think that thing is around $300. Not too bad, and you're pretty much getting almost like aim point comp M2. So it's a great freaking optic right there. When it comes to optics, some people say, hey, what about the variable optics or magnified optics? So when it comes to magnified optics, whether you have a primary arms prism or a trigger on ACOG or something like that, they're really good. Just think about the distances that you're gonna be using this rifle at. So 300 meters and under, I think that the red dots work fine. When it comes to variables, the one by sixes, again, think about the distances that you're gonna be going with. Honestly, I think that the variables, um, Man, they, they work great at distance. Um, they don't have quite the field of view that the fix do. And um, they don't do the 1X as good as the red dot does. They're kind of a jack of all trades, master of none type deal. And I've used a lot of different ones. I've used the Vortex 1x6, I've used the Steiner uh, 1x5, and they're good. It's just, I prefer either a fixed magnification on a Chichikon ACOG with like an offset RMR or an RMR on top, or just a straight red dot, because I think that works fine in plenty of situations. So guys, when you're setting up your duty rifle, remember light, sling, and optic. Those things will make a good fighting rifle. When you're setting up, make sure that you have something that works for you. Make sure you have something that can work to some extent or another ambidextrously. That's going to benefit you in the future. With your sling, make sure that's not in a position where it's gonna get tangled up. Make sure that your sling is set up so you can go hands-on if you need to. Finally guys, looking cool does matter, but What's not cool is being $28,000 in debt and having a credit score of 500. So make sure you're being sensible uh, financially. Don't bankrupt yourself doing this. I just have a lot of guys uh, message me and say, hey, it's really gonna break me, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna buy an Alcan Spectre or something like that. I'm like, hey, that's really cool, but um, you know, go with something a little cheaper. Don't, don't bankrupt yourselves, because that's not cool. So guys, lots of different options there. I hope this kind of, um, got you guys thinking about how you want to set up your rifles and um, make sure your rifle looks somewhat cool. You know, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to do it, but it should look cool to some extent or another. Hey guys, um, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, holsters and Gucci clothing and all that kind of stuff. We have a lot of companies who are now stepping up the plate and sending me a bunch of stuff. And lucky for you guys, uh, because I didn't buy it, I have like no bias towards it. So I'm just going to wreck this stuff and we're going to see how it does. Um, Finally, some people have been getting pissed because I haven't been able to answer their comments. I love comments. I try to answer them as much as possible. Just realize I'm getting like 800 comments a day. I'm one guy. I'm constantly TDY. I'm constantly doing stuff. I am active duty. So because of that, um, things are going to slip through. I'm not going to catch them all the time. So I apologize, but um, I do love you.